If you are looking for a solid JavaScript framework, SolidJS is an excellent choice. I loved it when I looked at it ages ago, I loved the developer ergonomics it provided and it's been gathering significant momentum in recent years. So if you are like me and like learning new tech even if it's not something that you will immediately use in your day job, this lesson is for you, so let's go. Creating a new SolidJS project is pretty easy, it comes with its own templates and even provides a template for TypeScript. We are running npx dkit which is essentially going to download the git project solidjs slash templates and from that the ts folder and extract it into this folder called demo-solid. And now we have a new solidjs typescript project and we can simply cd into this directory and run npm install. Once the installation is complete, we can open it up in our favorite IDE which is of course VS Code. Now the first thing that I want to showcase about SolidJS is something that you can find within the package.json. Notice that in order to use SolidJS, the only package that you really need is the SolidJS package itself. Because SolidJS is written in TypeScript with TypeScript first support, you don't have to install any type definitions, for example, at type slash react. The next thing that I want to point out is not specific to SolidJS and is more specific to this particular template and that is that it is using Vite as its module bundler. If you are new to Vite, I already have a few lessons up on that and I'll leave them in the description, but fundamentally this particular template is going to compile blazingly fast. Now you don't have to use Vite with SolidJS, any other module bundler like Webpack will also work perfectly fine. And one last thing that I want to point out within the package.json is the scripts section. We have three key main scripts. We have the start script which is going to be used during development and the dev script is the same. We have the build script which is going to bundle our application so we can deploy it to production and we have the serve script which can be used to test the production build locally if you wish to do so. We will demo all of these in this lesson. Now the way Vite works is that it looks at our index.html and looks for any script tags that it might have and makes them our application entry points. Within our index.html we have the src attribute pointing to src slash index.tsx and that is our main application entry point. So if we go ahead and open that up within our IDE, we find the usual render function which is rendering a simple app component. So the next step of course is to jump into the app component found within app.tsx. Now it is a pretty simple stateless component. So if you are familiar with any other TSX components, for example with React, this should be pretty familiar. So let's run this application by opening up our terminal and running npm start. And then we can visit this application within our browser and we can see this component being rendered on screen. Now it's prompting us to modify edit source.app.tsx. So let's jump back into our IDE and modify the edit text to be modify. And this will live reload within the browser. And we can see that our text is updated within the component. So no surprises so far. Let's modify this to build a very basic web application. We get rid of all of the imports and then we only bring in the component import from SolidJS along with the create signal function. Create signal is how you create atomic state variables within SolidJS. And now we can get rid of whatever app component was rendering before. Now the first thing that we will do is we will create a state to store a number of elephants. We do this by calling the create signal function, passing in an initial value which we are setting to zero and this returns a tuple of two things. A function that we are storing in a variable called elephants which we can invoke to get the current value of the signal and a function which we have stored in set elephants, which can be used to set a new value for the signal. Now let's create a utility function which increases the number of elephants by one. This will first use the current value of the signal by invoking elephants and then invoke set elephants by passing in elephants plus one, thus incrementing our total elephant count. SolidJS works on the concept of actions and effects. You modifying a signal is essentially an action and the effect is that your application is going to re-render with an updated DOM. You don't have to constantly think about these concepts because SolidJS is pretty much transparent reactive. Now for the rendering of our app component, we want to simply render a div that's going to display the current number of elephants followed by a button that is going to add a new elephant to the room which we are going to point to the increase population function. Because we are getting the current number of elephants by invoking the elephants signal, Whenever the particular signal value is going to change, this UI is automatically going to be re-rendered by SolidJS. And if we jump back to the browser, we can see that in action. We can click the button to add a new elephant and the elephant count updates. 
Notice that SolidJS works out of the box with JSX or as I like to call it, TSX. This means that you get all of the great developer ergonomics that the TypeScript team has built for TSX without any of the compromises. And the only thing that SolidJS needs to do different in order to support JSX is to provide a custom Babel transform. Let's look at what I mean. We can actually take our application and put it into playground.solidjs.com. Of course, our application behaves exactly the same, but the reason why I came over here is to show you the generated JavaScript output. You can see that the output pretty much matches our input. We still have the const app, we still have the two calls, but the only thing that is different is the return call in which JSX is replaced with something that is generated by the SolidJS transform. Now, just like in the real world with React, you don't exactly need to know how individual JSX elements are transformed into React.create element. You don't actually need to know exactly how these particular JSX elements are being transformed into various DOM elements. The fundamental thing that you need to know is that the JSX is going to be transformed by SolidJS into something that it can run again and again as you modify various things, for example, signals. And because the type checking is performed independently of the JSX transform, this means that you are not likely to run into any weird compile time type checking issues that you would in other frameworks that either try to add additional TypeScript syntax like Svelte or try to support type checking for their own template languages like Angular. This is because type checking is an extremely hard problem that I feel is best solved by the TypeScript team, which is dedicated for this purpose. And now let's look at how Solid improves in state management over React. As your application gets bigger and bigger and starts to scale to the moon, you find yourself wanting to create more and more reusable portions of your application. For example, think of an e-commerce application. We can think of the elephants as the number of items in our cart and the increase population button as add to cart. You might want to use it again and again, so we move them into their own custom components. We can move the elephant count into its own custom component, simply pasting in the div that we had before. We can move the add elephant button into its own custom component as well, simply pasting in the button that we had before. And now for the people that still want to use the elephant count and the add elephant button next to each other, we create this component called jungle that simply renders out the elephant count and the elephant button. And this is something that we had previously in our app.tsx, that is the elephant count and the button. So we can just place in the jungle component to essentially get the same functionality that we had before. And this brings us to the reason why state management libraries exist in any large scale application. Fundamentally, our application state is not a one-to-one -one map of our application component tree. So at this point, we have to figure out a way to get the elephants and the increased population all the way through the jungle into the elephant count and the add elephant button. Fortunately, with SolidJS, you don't actually need to have your effects as a part of your render tree. So we cut the two utilities that we have and we create a new JavaScript module called App Store and we simply paste in the same code that we had before and from this module, export the elephants and the increase population variables. And now we can call the increase population method anywhere within our render tree and it will correctly update the elephant count. So we don't need to do anything fancy in order to get access to this particular method. Similarly, in order to get access to the current elephant signal value, we can simply bring in the elephants export from the app store module. And now everything should work as expected. All of our files are without errors and there are no more red files. And because we had npm start running in the background, we can open up the browser and you can see that it still behaves exactly as it was doing before. Now, there are a lot of developers that like abstractions for the sake of abstractions, but I personally find that the simpler the code, the less likely you are to create a bug. Now, one more thing that I want to point out is because we've moved the app store into its own module, if you make a modification to any other module, for example, the elephant count by adding a cute little elephant emoji, only this particular elephant count module is going to get reloaded and the app store will get reused. This means that we can update our application UI without overwriting the previous state. So within the browser, you can see that the count is still 13 and we can continue to increment it in the new UI. And that's another signal of good software development. You know your abstractions are good if they result in simpler and less concepts. Now, finally, as you mentioned, when we looked at our package.json, when we are ready to build our application for production, we can run npm run build. And this builds our production app into the dist folder 
which we can push to some hosting provider and I have lessons for that already that I will link in the video description. But you can also test it locally by running npm run serve. This gives us this URL localhost 5000 and you can see that our production app behaves exactly as it did during dev. There is a lot more that goes into making a complete front-end development framework and SolidJS is no exception. One thing that I do want to point out is that SolidJS is blazingly fast. In fact, almost as fast as vanilla JavaScript. And that's all for this lesson. It should be enough to get you started or at least excited. Smash the like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.